Did you know the average man's testosterone levels have been dropping about 1% every year since the 1980s? Now imagine adding intermittent fasting into the mix. Some people swear it skyrockets your testosterone by 180%, while others warn it could tank your manhood overnight. In fact, one 1989 study often cited in the biohacking world found a 67% surge in luteinizing hormone and a 180% jump in testosterone in lean men after short-term fasting. But more recent research paints a very different picture. Today, we're exposing the hidden truth about intermittent fasting and longer-term fasting and their impact on testosterone. Let's start by examining short-term fasting protocols like 16 to 8 and 18 to 6. Time-restricted eating like the popular 16 to 8 diet is the go-to for many fitness enthusiasts. However, how does it impact male testosterone? Short-term studies in healthy young men suggest it can dial down testosterone levels a bit. For example, a review of four studies involving resistance trained men who followed a 16 to 8 fasting schedule for between 4 and 44 weeks saw significantly lower total and free testosterone compared to a normal eating schedule. The surprising part, in each trial muscle mass was not negatively affected despite the hormone drop. Interestingly, sex hormone binding globulin does not show any changes according to the review. So just how much is testosterone lowered by intermittent fasting? We can see here that this table from the review summarizes the results. The Moro 2016 and Moro 2021 studies all indicate a difference in total testosterone of 17% to 21%, while the Moro 2016 study shows a decrease of free testosterone of 27%. Interestingly, the Stratton study showed only a 1% decrease in testosterone in both groups, even while restricting calories by 25% in both groups. Potentially, the four-week time frame may have not been enough to see significant effects, but the Moro 2020 study had the same duration. Now, let's move on to longer-term fasting. What about longer fasts, 24, 48, 72 hours or more? Here's where things get really interesting and a bit concerning. The longer you fast, the more your body starts to act like it's in survival mode. And one way it saves energy is by dialing down reproductive hormones. Clinical research shows that a 48 hour water fast can significantly suppress the male reproductive axis. In one classic study, two days of fasting caused a sharp drop in luteinizing hormone and a parallel drop in testosterone in healthy men. Specifically, their luteinizing hormone pulse frequency halved a 50% decline and mean testosterone levels fell by roughly 20% after 48 hours with no food. This study did only involve eight subjects though as a major caveat. When researchers extended fasting further, the trend continued in a trial of six days of zero calorie fasting, young men's testosterone levels kept decreasing from day two through day six. By days four to six, testosterone was significantly lower than in non-fasting controls. From these figures, the total testosterone levels looked like they roughly halved and free testosterone looked like it reduced from about 7.5 to just under five nanomoles per liter. The good news is everything rebounded to normal after refeeding. So the effect appears to be temporary, but while you're in a prolonged fast, your testosterone is going to gradually lower. Now, let me explain the mechanism behind this. Why does fasting lower testosterone when it's prolonged? A big piece of the puzzle is stress. Both the psychological stress of not eating and the physiological stress as your body shifts fuel sources. Typically, when you're stressed or calorie deprived, the body elevates cortisol, the stress hormone, and conserves energy by down-regulating the reproductive axis, the hypothalamus-pituitary gonad connection. Interestingly, research shows that the fasting-induced testosterone drop isn't entirely explained by cortisol spikes. In the 48-hour fast study, men's luteinizing hormone and testosterone fell without any significant rise in cortisol levels. So something else like caloric deficit itself or other hormones like leptin or insulin signaled the brain to hit the brakes on testosterone production. 
That said, cortisol can still play a role, especially with intermittent fasting routines that might increase overall stress if you're not adapting well. Individual variation is huge here. Are you a high-strung, lean individual pushing intense workouts in a fasted state? You might see a bigger cortisol and testosterone impact than, say, an older, heavier guy doing gentle fasts. If you're very lean with low fat reserves, your body perceives fasting as a bigger threat, meaning a stronger stress response and more testosterone suppression. If you're carrying more body fat, a 24 to 48 hour fast might be less of a shock hormonally, though remember, obese men often start with lower testosterone to begin with. There's also evidence that a calorie restriction boosts testosterone in obese men, whereas it lowers testosterone in lean men, which likely plays a role here too. To minimize downsides, you'll want to manage overall stress, sleep well, don't overtrain while fasted, and consider meditative or relaxing practices if you notice fasting makes you edgy. We want fasting to work for you, not to push you into chronic stress. Let me give you some practical guidelines. So while I do not generally recommend intermittent fasting, if you do want to use intermittent fasting, here is how you can do it while minimizing testosterone impact. First, moderate your fasting window. For daily fasting, don't overdo it. Sticking to a 14 to 10 or 16 to 8 window is a good starting point for most men. The longer daily fasts, 18 to 20 plus hours, or one meal a day might cause more stress and hormonal disruption for some. Second, fuel your feeding window wisely. When you do eat, make it count. Ensure you're getting ample protein, at least 0.8 to one gram per pound of lean body mass per day, or more if you're lifting. This helps preserve muscle and provides the building blocks for hormones as many components of the hormone system rely on amino acids, cholesterol, and other nutrients. Include healthy fats. Third, time your workouts strategically. If you're training, pay attention to how it intersects with your fasting. Many folks successfully train near the end of their fasting window and then eat a good meal right after. This can actually sync well with natural anabolic hormone rhythms. High intensity morning workouts on an empty stomach are doable for some and can spike testosterone and growth hormone transiently. But if you feel drained, try moving your workout to within your eating window. Resistance training is highly recommended on any fasting plan because it sends a powerful signal to hold onto muscle and even boosts testosterone briefly post-workout. Fourth, incorporate refeeds or hormone tune up days. If you're doing extended fast beyond 24 hours or long stretches of intensive intermittent fasting, consider scheduling periodic refeed days. This can reassure your body that food is abundant and help reset hormones like leptin, which in turn can signal the brain to keep testosterone online. Fifth, stay hydrated and manage stress. This might sound basic, but it's crucial. Dehydration can amplify cortisol and make fasting feel much harder. Drink water and consider electrolytes, especially if you're doing longer fasts. Sixth, listen to your body's signals and watch for red flags. If you notice persistent fatigue, crashing libido, erectile issues, poor concentration, irritability, or dropping strength in the gym, these can be warning signs that your approach is too extreme for you. These are potentially symptoms of low testosterone or high stress. Don't ignore these. You might need to add an extra snack, shorten your fast, or reintroduce a healthy breakfast on training days. Now, let me tell you who should avoid intermittent fasting. Young men under 18 to 21 should be cautious. If you're still in your late teens or finishing puberty, intermittent fasting is generally not recommended. Your body is still developing and you need consistent nutrition. Men with already low testosterone or fertility goals should also be careful. If you've been diagnosed with clinically low testosterone or you're trying to optimize fertility, trying to conceive and so on, be cautious with fasting. You don't want to do anything that might further suppress your reproductive axis. Extremely lean, high-performance athletes should also avoid it. If you are, say, 8% body fat and training twice a day, your margin for energy deficit is thin. Fasting could quickly lead to overtraining symptoms and hormonal drops. Finally, high stress or poor sleep individuals should avoid intermittent fasting. Fasting is an extra stress. If you're already chronically stressed, big workload, high cortisol, or you sleep four to five hours a night, 
adding fasting might make things worse. If this video changed how you think about intermittent fasting, please give this video a like and let me know in the comments your thoughts. Do you practice intermittent fasting? And if so, have you found it has impacted your testosterone or libido?